Hey, I'm EJ Swatzel, and this is Old School at the Back Porch Antiques. So, pop quiz. Here we are, Back Porch Antiques, and today we're going to do a pop quiz. I know, old school, nobody likes quizzes. I already had people say, hey, I'm, I'm game if I don't have to do any homework. Uh, but today, uh, we're going to see what you know about old stuff. So some of you are probably experts, and this is uh, way under your uh, ability. Uh, some of us are probably newbies, and we don't know a lot about anything. Uh, most of us are probably somewhere in between, and we've heard about certain things heard rumors about things that might be worth some money, but um, our time together today is to kind of pick your brain and see how good you are, uh, but to also show you some value in some things that might be laying around that you might be able to uh, find some value in and uh, maybe move for some profit for, um, you know, just a little jingle in your pocket. Uh, so I'm here to help. So some of the things that are brought into my store and a lot of people uh, think are valuable, um, we're going to highlight some of those, but first, I see a lot of coins. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, you know, how much coins are worth. Uh, some coins are worth a lot of money. Some coins aren't worth much money at all. So we're going to pick your brain a little bit today, and I'm going to start with this one right here. This at the bottom says 1892. It's kind of dingy. It's well-worn. It's a little slick. Um, and it's got um, quite a bit of wear to it. So, question to you is, is this home run or is this a bust? This is a home run. If you can find this one, this is a home run. If you'll notice down here on the bottom, there's a little CC. It's Carson City. Many of you probably don't know much about antiques, but know that a Carson City silver dollar it has some value. Especially in 1892, those in the 90s are probably the worth, uh, worth some of the most. And this particular coin right here, valued in a $350 range. So, move on along. Look at this nice shiny one. 1925, good and shiny. You can see the feathers on the bird on the back and all of that. So, home run or bust? Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say bust, but it's definitely not a home run. The value of this 25 piece dollar is around 35 bucks. So another thing that I see come in all the time is a lot of people are bringing in old bottles. Um, everybody thinks that an old bottle uh, might have some value to it, and they may. Um, specific ideas or anything with Greenville on them. Uh, Greenville, Tennessee, local, uh, local things uh, usually hold a premium in value. Uh, but I see a lot of these as well. These Pepsi bottles uh, from say early 80s, mid 80s. This one there was a series put out by Pepsi uh, about Richard Petty. There were several of those. I've had several people bring them in and say Hey, this has still got the Coke in it, or still got the Pepsi in it, it's still capped. It's got to be worth a lot of money, right? No, it's not worth a lot of money at all. I would put a value on this vintage Richard Petty Pepsi bottle of about a dollar and a half. Um, so I guess that's safe to say that's a bust. So, something that you might see in your grandmother's house that might have been left to you or that you might have seen at a yard sale or something along those lines, uh, are baskets. Uh, when I was growing up, I didn't see a lot of value in baskets, but for many of you people who do antiques, you understand that there's a lot of potential uh, in an old basket. Now here's an example. This is an old egg basket. Uh, I'm going to read the tag to kind of uh, tell you some specifics about it. Now they actually call this pattern, wait for it, a buttock basket. Yeah, so uh, this is a wrapped handle, which gives it a little bit more value, and it's well done, probably turn of the century or older, turn of the uh, 20th century, or maybe a little bit older. Uh, so if you find these in storage, find one of these at a yard sale, is it a home run or is it a bust? Probably a home run. It's a pretty good basket. It's original. It's well done. The handle is uh, wrapped. Uh, the read on the handle is, is real, uh, real good, real thick, real sturdy. Uh, the value of this basket is somewhere around $150. What about those old tins that you saw in grandmother's house or that you saw at an um, antique store somewhere? 
Now this is an example of a Morton's, uh, I guess iodized salt tin. Home run or bust? Bust. These were mass produced in the 90s. Uh, there were a lot of them. They are pretty, uh, but they're not actually old at all, even though they give that antique look. Uh, you can value this particular pen, uh, a tin rather, at about $4. Now, don't get me wrong, there's value in $4, but in the realm of antiques, uh, that's not particularly one that you might want to uh, check out. So, on the flip side, here we go, an old Mountain Dew can. Straight up, Mountain Dew can. Uh, what do you think? Home run or bust? If you find one of these, you better get it because it's a home run. Um, this uh, particular Mountain Dew can would have been probably, I'm going to say early 60s. And uh, this one doesn't have the top in it, but it still doesn't uh, deter from the value of the can. Uh, this particular advertising scheme, uh, you'll see right here the, the um, uh, I guess it would be the catchphrase was, it'll tickle your innards. That's what they used to say. Uh, it was on all of the all of the Mountain Dew stuff. This is a 12 ounce can in great shape presents well. This is priced in my store. Uh, the vendor has two hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents on it. Uh, so if you run across any of these, do not I repeat, do not throw them away. This, my friends, is a home run. So what about quilts? Has your grandmother ever had any quilts to quilts on your uh, on her guest bed uh, when I saying don't go in the guest bedroom, the good quilts are on there, don't be on those beds, we don't want to mess them up. Um, there is some value in quilts, but quilts are tricky because you can actually quilt and make a quilt m nowadays and it would be new uh, and it wouldn't be worth nearly as much as an antique quilt. So I'll for you. Is this a home run or bust? This will be a home run. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, if you look closely, and you may be able to in, in our screenshot or you may not be able to, uh, the stitching uh, and the quilting is obviously hand done. It's not uniform. Uh, so you can, um, uh, you can tell that it's hand done. It has some age to it. This particular pattern is called the cathedral window. Uh, each of these little squares has to be individually done and then quilted into the quilt. Uh, they get the term cathedral window from uh, European uh, type cathedrals of stained glass. And it kind of gives that image. That's where this pattern originated from. Uh, it was from that European um, re uh, part of the world, if you will. I'm sure there are many, um, uh, many quilt experts out there who are probably going to tear this apart. So feel free, if you'd like to add to or deter from that, uh, to add that in the comments and we can discuss that as well. But this is a cathedral window quilt. Uh, I believe it to be antique, uh, but I also believe uh, that the value of this quilt is somewhere around $350. So yeah, a home run. All right, here we go. In your garage, do you have a hammer? That'd be a good place for a hammer, in the garage. Do you have a hammer that is that pretty? Because just a little bit of a side note and a shameless plug, we have several hammers that are that pretty at the Back Porch Antiques. Come see me. This particular hammer is a claw hammer, and it is branded bluegrass. Uh, so ask yourself, as part of your pop quiz, is this a home run or is this a bust? Home run. Bluegrass is a very popular brand. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been extremely well polished. We have a tool guy here at our shop. If you know much about the Back Porch Antiques, you probably know who the tool guy is, but he, he does really good work um, and he polishes up these collector pieces. Some people use them, um, but most people collect them, display them. Um, Bluegrass is a very popular brand. This one doesn't even have uh, many nicks or imperfections on the head. This is a 20 ounce hammer. Uh, value it at about $65. So, in the realm of hammers, definitely a home run. Here's one for you. A ball jar. A jelly jar. Some people put marbles in them. Some people will put, you name it, in them. Um, but this one's a little bit smaller. And it's got the regular zinc lid. What are your thoughts? Home run or bust? Definitely a home run. 
This is an original half pint ball mason jar. And uh, these are pretty rare. Uh, they, there weren't many of them made. Uh, they, um, I, I, I guess those who canned uh, in the old days wouldn't waste their efforts on canning such little supplies of things. Uh, but for those jars that supplied, that, that survived, uh, they would be worth $125 to $150 uh, for this, uh, this little jar right here. I want to tell you a little bit of something about um, verifying these jars because a lot of them were uh, reproduced. If you'll notice the bottom of that jar, I don't know if you can see it very well, but if you can, uh, you'll notice the imperfections on that bottle, um, or on that jar rather. Uh, if you find a jar that's of that size and it has several completely uniform circles on the bottom of it, that's a dead giveaway of a repop. Re um, and your old bottle or your old jars, I don't know why I keep saying bottles, but your old jars will have imperfections in them, bubbles, etc. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that's the story on, on this little half pint jar. Um, if you find one, hang on to it, it's a home run. Last but not least, my heart songs. Well, well, we'll go with this. And then I'll have one more item. So, I like license plates. You know that. Because last week, I did a video directly on license plates. If you haven't seen that video, we will add the link to it in the comments below. Uh, so check that out, and uh, you can learn a little bit more about Tennessee license plates. Here is a pair uh, that I have uh, actually acquired since I last talked with you. Uh, this is a set of 1958 um, truck tags, but they're also farm tags. And the two weight class original paint, as you can tell. Many people would probably walk by these, but people with my sickness, um, as far as addiction to license plates, might not. Uh, so what do you think? Is this a home run or is this a bust? This is a home run. Uh, mainly for me because I absolutely love license plates, but also these are fairly rare and I'll tell you why. Because in the early 60s, um, farm plates were on farm trucks, uh, which were in the mud and the manure and they were ran into trees and they didn't last. So they're pretty rare. Now a lot of people don't like the square plates, but they're gaining in popularity uh, because uh, individuals who collect license plates love to get an, a, uh, a piece for every year. Uh, I would value this pair at about $150. So definitely not something worth leaving in the barn stall. Lastly, your mama's frying pan. Some people use these as weapons. Some people use them as means to fry up some good chicken. Uh, you name it, uh, these have been used as weapons um, and obviously as cookware. This is a Griswold model. And uh, I'm going to ask you for your last question. I will give you double points for getting this one right. Is this a home run or is this a bust? Actually a home run. If you can find this, it's a home run. Notice the Griswold logo. Uh, lots of people like to collect Griswold brand, Wagner brand, but specifically Griswold. Uh, this is a small block logo uh, pan for any of you. Uh, specific collectors out there that uh, want to add to the uh, expertise in the comments, feel free. Uh, small block logo. There are people out there who can tell you the specific years of the logos. Uh, I can research that, but I can't tell you that off the top of my head. But I do know that this is a, uh, um, it calls it 11 and a quarter inch skillet. So it's probably around a number 10 in good shape, no cracks, well seasoned. Uh, we have lots of these at the store if by chance you're looking for a good pan, but um, the value of this pan is somewhere around $100, $125. So definitely not it's something that you would want to walk away from at a yard sale for $10 uh, or, um, you know, by any means you want to walk away from something like this that's thrown away. Uh, so I hope you did well on your pop quiz. If you get a chance, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and um, like this video. There's also a notification button, ring that bell. If you get a chance to do that, you'll see notifications of when we add some more videos. And I would love to have the opportunity to show you how to find some more of this stuff uh, and how to maybe flip it over for some cash or how to become a collector of your own. Uh, so if you'll stay tuned, it will be my privilege uh, to help you learn how to do that. We're gonna do some um, product reviews. We're gonna do some uh, interviews of some experts somewhere down the road, uh, local history and things like that. I'm excited about what this uh, YouTube uh, channel um, 
holds in the future. So give us that like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.